one of the old hickory singers, kiddies. The makers of Blue Bonnet Margarine and Tender Leaf Tea present the Fred Allen Show. With Fred's guests, Mary Livingston's husband, Portland Hopper, Minerva Pius as Mrs. Nussbaugh, Alan Reed as Paul Staff Openshaw, Parker Fenley as Titus Moody, the DeMarco sisters, and Al Goodman and his orchestra. And until I start tooting the claghorn, my name is Kenny Delmar. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Shakespeare said, to be or not to be. Benjamin Franklin said, remember, time is money. But for the last eight months, all I've said is, here he is again, Fred Allen. <laughs> Thank you, and good evening. Thank you, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And Kenny, I happen to overhear your opening remarks. Lad, if you are unhappy in your work... Well, how can I be happy, Fred? Every Sunday, what do I do? I have one line. Here he is again. Kenny, the man who invented the telephone only had one line when he started. Yeah, but Fred, I'm not getting any place in radio. It's the same on my other show. Oh, you're on another... Uh... The Lucky Strike program. Oh, the Lucky Strike program. What do you do on that? You know when a man says L-S-M-F-T? Yeah. Then the tobacco auctioneer says, Yacht to the yacht to the sold to American. Uh-huh. Then a voice says, you bet. You bet. Another voice says, yes, sir. Yes, sir. The voice that says, yes, sir, is mine. <laughs> You're beaten down on that show, too, huh? Now, Kenny, why don't you give up that other job and just work on our show? You mean you'll pay me the extra money? No, Kenny, but I tell you what I shall do. I'll let you add the line you have on the Lucky Strike program to the line you have on our show. Put them together now and see how they sound. Here he is again. Yes, sir. How is that? Well, that's more like it, Fred. Now I've got something God, to do. As long as you're happy, Kenny. Mr. Allen. Well, for Well, Portland, pull up an old rejoiner and sit down. What's new? Mama says President Truman has taken over all the coal mines. Does your mother need coal? Yes. Mama's calling up the White House tomorrow and ordering two tons. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> Do away with the middle man. Go right to the top. Right? Well, if she needs any wood, the president can sit down at the piano and give her a couple of chords, I imagine. <laughs> Not good. <laughs> The man crept in here and did something to the script tonight. I won't mention his name. Mama says the world today is a bowling alley. The world is a bowling alley? Every time you turn around, there's a strike. Well, I'm glad that anything you don't understand, applaud. It's perfectly all right. That's what they do in Hollywood. People come in, just applaud and get warm and go home. Trains are running again, Portland. Yes, if the railroad strike lasted one more week, yeah. the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe would have been off the hit parade. Oh, that would have been terrible. Well, I, uh, I think I'll run along, Portland. I have to get my magnifying glass and worm a crab apple. Mama says Friday is your birthday. That's right. How old are you? Nobody knows, Portland. I was born before the Decker Company started, so there weren't any records in those days. Mama says laugh. Now, don't you laugh. Don't you laugh. You're going to establish a precedent in here. I want to know about it. Mama says last year when the candles on your birthday cake melted down, yeah. there was enough grease to wax the floor at Roseland. Oh, I'm, I'm not that old, Portland. Mama says if you were a piece of furniture, you'd be an antique. <laughs> if I was an antique in radio, I'd be Duncan's other fight. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, that's life, I guess, Portland. Mama says life is like the Australian fig bird. The Australian fig bird? It lives on the seeds and figs. But there aren't any figs in Australia. The Australian fig bird dies at birth. And the Australian fig bird has nothing on our jokes. That's it. <laughs> I think we'd better get along to Alan's Alley, Portland. What is your question tonight? Well, recently, a Mr. Ralph Slater, a specialist in mental suggestion, made a phonograph record that he guarantees will put any insomniac to sleep. And so our question is, do you have any trouble sleeping? And if you do, what are you doing about it? Shall we go? As the dollar did said when the glutton sat down, I'll be gone in a minute. <laughs> It's so 
so good to get back to Allen's Alley, Portland. It's as quiet as a eel coiling in a bucket of whipped cream. <laughs> Say, I wonder... I wonder if the senator is in. Let's know. Somebody, I see. Somebody knows. Yes, I am. Claghorn's the name Senator Claghorn. Well, is. look, I know. Something tells me you don't remember me, sir. Look, I remember I'm you. I'm from the south. The bone and possum paradise. Now, look, Senator. The only plant life I have around my house is a Virginia creeper. Now, wait a minute. Every time I get chicken pox, they're southern fried. <laughs> senator. You remember me now, son? No. Don't say no in my presence. Why not? You hey. know, that's north, abbreviated. <laughs> Senator, what about this sleeping problem? Well, I, I say, uh, when I first went to the Senate, I had plenty of trouble sleeping. You, uh... After the roll was called, I'd put on my sail sucker night shirt and yeah. my Lindsay Woolsey beret. Yeah. yeah. I'd face the south, lean back, close my eyes... And go to sleep, huh? Until some Yankee pigeon fucker would get up, start clapping his lips, and break up my Morpheus filibuster. <laughs> filibuster, that is... Heard you the first time, Senator. Are you still uh, losing sleep, Senator? No, oh, I've solved my problem, son. How? When I'm ready to sleep in the Senate, I sit back and croon myself my southern lullaby. What is your southern lullaby? rock a small fry on the cotton tree top. When the southern wind blows, your cradle will rock. When the wind's from the north, I say, baby, you'll ball. For down will come cradle. Stop just in time. I was dozing off myself. Now, I wonder how Titus Moody is doing. Howdy, bub. <laughs> You're starting to sound like Dennis Day, Titus. <laughs> Tell you, Mr. Moody, do you have any trouble sleeping? I only half sleep. Half sleep? I got short eyelids. <laughs> With short eyelids, you can't close your eyes, eh? Only when I frown. Oh, I see. Well, are you the only one awake on the farm? No, daylight saving time has got everything in a swivet. The animals are bewildered? Yeah, my cow had insomnia. Your cow didn't sleep at all? The bags under her eyes were so big, I didn't know which end to milk. <laughs> you were confused, eh? Yeah. First time I milked the wrong end and got two buckets full of homogenized tears. Well, have you cured the cow's insomnia? I got a book on hypnotizing. Good. I stood in front of the cow. Yeah. I stared right into her eyes. Uh-huh. I started waving with my hands. Uh-huh. I said, Alagazam, Alagazin, you ain't a cow, you're a hen. You're a hen. You're a hen. Well, was your hypnotism a success? Yeah. Today that cow thinks she's a hen. Well, how do you know? Well, she's sitting on a nest. You mean? She's laying eggnogs. <laughs> let's try let's try this next door here. No. Oh, Mrs. Nussbaum. You are expecting maybe Hoagie Cop Uncle. <laughs> Tell me, Mrs. Ann, do you have trouble sleeping? Who could sleep? Every night with his dreaming, my husband Pierre is waking me up. He dreams, huh? Always his different things. Dreams his different things? How do you mean? One night Pierre is dreaming he is the lone stranger. Yeah. <laughs> All night long he is yelling, Hi ho, Silva! Hi ho, Silva, huh? Upstairs is living on Mr. Silva. Yeah. <laughs> Let's try here. You knock three times. 
Holmes, do you think that's nice? In my last picture, the postman rang twice. <laughs> ah, Falstaff, you have new poems tonight? Indubitably. <laughs> As Herb said the little bear to the big giraffe, let's see the hyena just for a laugh. No. Or, uh, when I called her baby, her face lit up because she had a lantern jaw. <laughs> no. <laughs> How about this? Mother's home putting spikes in her shoes. She's playing first base for Vera Cruz. Now, wait a minute, Paul. <laughs> you exponent of the Hackney, tonight we are discussing the problem of sleep. My poem awaits your bidding. And what is your shut-eye sonata called? My recipe for slumber. How does it geek? If you cannot sleep at night and you don't know what to do, my recipe for slumber is just the thing for you. Don't waste time taking powders. Don't bother counting sheep. Don't dawdle in a hot bath hoping you will sleep. But don't give up drinking coffee. Don't send for any gland man. You can eat and drink all night, and still you'll meet the sand man. My recipe for slumber is older than the Sphinx. Just cut 20 tiddlies into halves, and you'll get 40 winks. Well, thank you. Accompanied by Maestro Al Goodman, and as I haven't got a joke for them this week, Philharmonic, the DeMarco sing, Doing What Comes Naturally. <laughs> Eater in your family will tell you, gee, mom, this tastes swell. Blue Bonnet brings you proved nutrition, too. It's rich in food energy, rich in vitamin A. As for economy, you'll find Blue Bonnet saves you real money. Costs just about half as much as an expensive table spread. And remember, Blue Bonnet margarine is a product of the makers of Fleischmann's yeast, so you know it's pure, fresh, dependable. These days, your grocer doesn't always have Blue Bonnet, for there's an acute shortage of table spreads, but keep asking. He'll have it. And when he does, grab it. Remember the letters F-N-E for flavor, nutrition, economy. Blue Bonnet Margarine gives all free flavor, nutrition, economy. That was just a short order of Who Do You Love, I Hope, played by Maestro Al Goodman and his 40 men who... This is Studio 16. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. This last booth is the control room. Say, just a minute. That little man with the mildew on him is a vice president. Say, wait a minute. What is this? This is a Radio City 60-cent tour. Okay, folks, let's get going. Hey, wait a minute. I got a stowaway here. A stowaway in a tour? Only 15 people paid. Now I got 16. Who would be low enough to sneak into a tour to save 60 cents? There's the guy. Hey, you. Who, me? Jack Benny. Mr. Benny down. I'll give you the 60 cents. Wait a minute, Fred. Wait a minute. Put that money away. But, Jack, I've only seen half the tour. Well, Jack... <laughs> give him 30 cents. Here you are, guys. Thanks. Follow me, folks. Now, on your right is a water cooler. <laughs> but, Fred, 
It was nice of you to pay that 30 cents. Oh, it was nothing. Nothing, he says. 30 cents. <laughs> Jack, how can you be so cheap? All right, go ahead. Be like the other radio comedian. Tell some cheap jokes. Say I'm tighter than the skin on Sidney Greenstreet's hip. <laughs> Squeeze a nickel so hard the E pluribus laps over the unum. Tell him. <laughs> well, Jack, I didn't... Oh, start insulting me after I made a, st- a special trip up here just to say goodbye before I leave for Hollywood. Well, Jack, I... All of a sudden, I'm cheap. I won't even eat in the sun. My shadow might ask me for a bite. <laughs> Your shadow has teeth? <laughs> Jack, don't... Jack, don't get excited. Look, if you're cheap, you're cheap. That's the way I look at it. <laughs> Some people save asparagus ends. It's a hobby. My hobby is not spending. <laughs> well, Jack, if there ever was a time that you and I should not argue, this is the time. What do you mean, this is the time? Well, a lot of, haven't you heard, a lot of the radio programs that have been on, been on for many years have been canceled. They're, they'll not be back on the air next fall. Well, that's radio, Fred. It's dog eat dog. I always say only the fit survive. Oh, how true. By the way, you uh, you finished tonight, didn't you? <laughs> yes, sir. Tonight was my last show of the season. Did your sponsor mention anything about your program coming uh, back in October? Well, no, no, Fred. But we have a mutual understanding. You see, we always sort of take it for granted. Oh, the season ends. The sponsor shakes hands with me. And then we... Yuck! <laughs> Jack! Jack, what's, what's wrong? Tonight he didn't shake hands. <laughs> well, that's what's happened to the street singer. <laughs> At the end of the year, his sponsor used to wink. One year he didn't wink. The street singer was back in the street. Well, Fred, why should my sponsor want to get rid of me? Well, I'm funnier than I was when I started, and I'm getting less money. Really? Some weeks when he's short, I take tobacco. <laughs> I hate well, to get that... these big laughs on your program. I... <laughs> Let's face it, Jack. Radio needs new blood. Who knows? We, we, we may be through. I've been on radio 14 years. They can't throw me aside like an old shoe. But, Jack... 14 years. And now, like an old shoe... But, Jack, you with that hmm and yipe, 14 years is a long time. <laughs> what has Mark Perkins got that I haven't got? Only longer commercials. <laughs> well, Jack, you know how it is in radio. Today you're a star. Tomorrow Ralph Edwards is hitting you in the face with a pie. <laughs> like an old shoe. Well, cheer up, Jack. At least we have our memories. We've known each other for 30 years. Yep. The first time I met you, Fred, I was just a kid in school. A diller, a dollar, a 10 o'clock scholar. You were the only 10 o'clock scholar I ever saw with 5 o'clock shadow. <laughs> How I could use some of that fuzz today. I could use a good joke today, too. <laughs> the next time we met, we were in Vaudeville, remember? You were doing a musical act. Playing the violin. What a finish I had. When I played Glowworm, my violin lit up. <laughs> With those neon strings, it was beautiful. Fred, remember my encore? Encore? Remember I'd put the violin bow in my teeth, bend the crab, and play Listen to the Mockingbird? And as you bent the crab, two mockingbirds flew out of the back of your pants. I stopped every show. (laughs) Except this one. Remember the closing... This one stopped five minutes before I got on it. Remember, remember that week in Needles, Arizona, the closing act, Cohen's Camels. Cohen's? No, no, the I closing don't. act. Jack, how could you forget Cohen's Camels? Cohen, I remember. My sponsor told me to forget that other word. <laughs> ah, those were the happy days. The next time I saw you, you were just going into radio. Radio. I remember the morning Marconi called me up. <laughs> Marconi? Marconi and Singing Sam had a little radio station in a doorway down on the east side. The antenna was a Western Union boy holding a wire. Well, I guess the jokes don't fit me. No, they don't. The antenna. When did I ever say antenna on my own show? Go ahead, Fred. Well, it's all over, Jack. We've come to the end of the rainbow. Like an old shoe. Like a, there it is again. <laughs> And on ten minutes already, I've only had it for an old shoe. <laughs> oh, I forgot antenna. Yeah. You know, 
to get a boot out of that old shoe by now. Oh, I'm sorry I brought it back in again. Seems like only yesterday I ran into the May Company and said, Mary, stop demonstrating that Brillo. That's another word I don't know. Cheer up, Jack. When you re- when you're retired, you can tune in on my program. Your program? You mean you're not getting thrown out of radio too? Well, why should I? Listen, if my program is old stuff, you with that broken down Allen's Alley. Now, well, wait. I mean my new show. New show? Uh, people don't want entertainment today. A radio show has to give away things: nylons, ice boxes, automobiles. You mean to stay on the air, you have to give things away? Free? Yes. <laughs> I'll die first. <laughs> well, not me. I'm auditioning my new program tonight. And you're, Fred, you're giving things away? Tons of stuff. A stranger? What's the difference who gets it? <laughs> well, Fred, as long as I'm here in the studio... Well, I'm sorry, Jack. Professional... <laughs> Professional people cannot participate. It's a rule. But uh, don't you ever find people on these programs changing their names to, to get something for nothing? Well, occasionally we do catch a phony, but we're on the air. What can we do? Nothing. You you have to give them the merchandise? That's right. Hmm. Uh, Mr. Allen, we're ready for your audition. I'll run along, Fred. So long. So long, Jack. Hmm. Giving away things for nothing. Well, all right, Mr. Goodman. Let's try out my new show. How would you like to be king for a day? And here he is, the man who will change one of you nobodies into king for a day, the old kingmaker himself, Fred Allen. Thank you. Oh, thank you. And good evening. Did all you folks in the audience like those thousand-dollar bills you found on your seats when you came in? Good. And if you want more, there'll be a big bag of money at the door. On your way out, help yourselves. But the stage is loaded with hundreds of presents for the first man to answer our jumbo jackpot question. He will be king for a day. And here is our first eager contestant. Good evening, sir. What is your name? Abner Plog. Uh, Mr. Plog, how old are you? I'm 98. Nine. 98 years old. And don't pin no orchid onto me. No, uh, no orchid, eh? That's how I lost my wife. On a quiz program? Yeah. My wife was 102. The fella pinned an orchid onto her. I see. The weight of the orchid bent my wife over and snapped her spine. <laughs> well, that's too bad. Yeah, my wife won first prize, but she never knew it. Well, all right, Mr. Flog. Now for our question. You may be king for a day. I don't think I'll last through the day. <laughs> all right, we'll hurry. Tell me, who was the sixth president of the United States? Six. There were three names. Mary Margaret McBride. Oh. I'm awfully sorry, Mr. Flogg. But for making such a swell try, here is a gift certificate presented at LaGuardia Airfield, and you will get a brand new B-29 and a polka dot form-fitting parachute. Happy landing, Mr. Flogg. And here is our next potential king for a day. Your name, sir? Myron Proudfoot. <laughs> Myron Proudfoot. You look like a chap I know. I'm not interested in your friends. Start giving things away, brother. <laughs> what is your occupation, Mr. Proudfoot? I'm a chaplain in a bakery. What does a chaplain do in a bakery? I put wings on angel cakes. <laughs> been in the cake business, Mr. Proudfoot. Long enough to know a crumb when I see one. I see one. Now, don't get sarcastic, Mr. Proudleg. The name is Proudfoot, and make with the question. All right. Who is the sixth president of the United States? John Quincy Adams. John Quincy Adams is correct, and Mr. Myron Proudfoot is king for a day. Folks, here he is. King Proudfoot. Well, Your Majesty, how do you feel? Never mind how I feel. What do I get? Well, first... <laughs> first, for His Majesty from Schnook Sport Nook, a genuine no-splash beaver board canoe paddle. Here's... Canoe paddle? <laughs> oh, boy! <laughs> and with the compliments of Tiffany's, this chromium pitchfork. Oh, a four-pronger, and it's all mine. 
And from Hemingway's hardware store, 200 pounds of self-hardening putty for King. <laughs> just what I need. Just what I need. This is just the beginning, King. King, you are over 35. By two years. Fine. Now, Jumbo Carter, Uncle Jim, for his majesty. He's over... <laughs> That's right, backward. <laughs> and here, the piston rod from a genuine Baldwin locomotive, or His Majesty the King. <laughs> oh, locomotive. <laughs> and here, from Melody Lane Music Shop, this case of 2,000 soybean mandolin picks. These are the mandolins. I just keep pinching myself to believe it. Immediately after this program, Your Majesty will be guest of honor at a banquet at Hamburger Heaven. <laughs> through the courtesy of the sanitation department, you will be guest conductor on the 11-5 garbage run through the Bronx. <laughs> At night, in your arm and roll, you will be whisked by bicycle to Orange, New Jersey, where you will be the judge in a chicken cleaning contest. <laughs> I'm king for a day! And that's not all. There's more? Yes, we're going to start right now to make you look like a king. Sam of Sam's Super Shoe Shine Stand is here to brush your shoes. All right, Sam. Sam, watch out for the button. Next, the president of the Busy Bee Hat Cleaners is here to block your hat. Take the king's hat, Mr. Bumble. And change the newspaper and the hat back. Your suit is a little baggy, king. Boys, take his majesty's coat off. Wait, wait. On our stage, we have a Hoffman pressing machine. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. An expert operating the Hoffman pressing machine machine will press your trousers. Oh, famous for flavor. Flavor means more. It's more important through the summer months. So everybody sets out to get all the flavor going, and that leaves fake tender leaf tea for finer flavor and more of it. In spite of melting ice, the richer goodness of tender leaf tea persists. The last swallow of the glass is still delicious, still flavorful tender leaf tea. This comes is out NBC, the, the national broadcasting company. Uh. 